This is a medication that can be used for several things. It's actually used as an anti-epileptic to treat seizures, and it can be used for peripheral neuropathy, neuropathic pain, and prevention of migraines. It can also be used for restless leg syndrome. The reason you'll probably see it used most often is going to be for seizure treatment and neuropathic pain. So what is neuropathic pain? What will happen a lot of times is patients will come in and it's, it's like this tingling sensation that they'll get in their, in their feet, this tingling pain. So this is one of the reasons we really like to assess the type of pain. That's what we really ask our patients is what does it feel like? We don't necessarily just ask, are you having pain? What's really important to assess is what is the pain feeling like? If the patient describes like a tingling sensation type of pain, like their leg is falling asleep kind of pain, this is really our neuropathic pain and neurotin or gabapentin can be used to help to treat this kind of pain. So a lot of times in, in spinal patients, they'll come back from surgery um, and we'll, we'll throw Dilaudid at them, we'll throw Norco at them, we'll throw all these medications at them to try to pre- treat the pain and it does nothing for the pain. They're still unable to sleep. For this reason, a lot of times these patients are also prescribed Neurotin. Neurotin can actually help with that pain and help them to sleep where, you know, we think they just had this massive surgery, had their back opened up. But as we get in there and manipulate all these nerves uh, during a back surgery or neck surgery, we can actually cause a lot of this uh, neuropathic pain. And so this neurotin, this gabapentin can help to resolve some of that pain. So the biggest suggestion there is to really assess the quality, the type of pain that your patient's having. The exact method of gabapentin and the way that it actually works, the mechanism, ne- mechanism of action, is, is not really fully known. But therapeutic classes, analgesic adjunct, anticonvulsant, and mood stabilizer, some of the nursing considerations to keep in mind are we really want to monitor our patient closely for any changes in behavior or depression. If we're giving the medication for seizure activity, we really want to watch for seizure activity and make sure that we have our seizure precautions. The bed is low. There are no restraints. There's no restrictive clothing. And we want to assess the patient's pain level. If we're giving this for pain, we don't want to just slam it at them and see, you know, and and, and disappear for the rest of the night. We want to make sure that the medication is actually working and treating the pain. If we've tried, you know, our normal pain medications, our normal analgesics like Dilaudid or morphine or Norco or whatever, and that's not working, and then we try a gabapentin, it would be really important to kind of check to see uh, if that's actually working. One thing that I would do with a lot of my patients is, you know, your, your Dilaudid would be Q4 hours or whatever. Your gabapentin would be Q4 hours. So what I would do a lot of times is I would stagger those where I would give my Dilaudid two hours later. If the patient was having pain, I would give gabapentin. Then two hours later, if they're having pain, I would give Dilaudid or, or Norco or whatever. And so that way you're staggering the pain medications as well as kind of treating different kinds of pain. And by doing that, you know, you would see these patients that were just screaming and, and, and having pain and never able to sleep or anything were actually able to, to get some rest and to sleep um, just by kind of staggering that, staying ahead of the pain and treating different pain pathways. Patients should really take this medication as prescribed. Okay, it's important that they don't uh, overdose themselves uh, and, and, and cause any other problems. We really want to monitor for suicidal thoughts, confusion, depression, drowsiness, ataxia, facial edema, and hypertension. So this is a really helpful medication. It's something you're going to see a lot. Well, that I saw a lot uh, simply because uh, working neuro ICU, you know, you have patients that are getting this for different reasons, but a lot of patients are receiving it. Uh, But it's a good one to be aware of, and it's a good one to think about uh, if you meet patients or come across patients who are complaining of like the leg falling asleep type of pain and that it's just never going away. This could be a good option for them. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.